Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. And today we are making a classic Korean chicken soup called Samgyetang. Now, before we begin, I'm going to teach you how to phonetically pronounce Sam Ke Tang. Sam Ke Tang. It's not that difficult, so don't get it wrong. Just kidding. Well, not really. <laughs> before anyway. we begin, I want to let everyone know that you must be a king or a queen to enjoy Sam Ke Tang. Yes, you must be a king or queen. I'm serious. What? I could wear three crowns if I want to. I'm the queen. <laughs> Samgyetang was originally made long, long time ago for the royals, you know, of the royal court for kings and queens and of the royalty family. I mean, just imagine back in the day, who really could have access and could afford to have spring young chicken in whole with a variety of medicinal, holistic root vegetables? It really wasn't a dish for the common folks, unfortunately. But time has passed and now Samgyetang is enjoyed as a go-to meal if you are just getting over an illness or you are feeling a bit under the weather. It is also a gourmet dish to have for our senior elderly folks because again of its high nutritional value and it's loaded with so much protein. And you know, Samgyetang is often enjoyed during the summertime as your sort of you know, battle the heat of the summer by eating more hot food, whether it's spicy or temperature hot. Yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense, but that's also commonly done. So you could have this for summer or you could have it all throughout the year. This is a great hearty, so good for you, loaded with so much protein, soup to have anytime. So here's our star ingredient. Today I'm using Cornish hen. Now you could also use very small young chicken. This is about two pounds, but anything that's smaller, about two pounds, or two and a half at most is better. Now, when it comes to Samgyetang, there are a few ingredients that you need to get. And usually you could conveniently pick these guys up at your local Korean supermarket. But I understand not everyone has the luxury of living close to a Korean supermarket. So I will have all the product links, including the Korean ingredients, as well as the kitchen gadgets on my recipe blog. And I will list that recipe blog link in the description box below. And you know, you could sit back and relax and just watch the rest of this video because on that blog there will be written recipe instructions as well as a detailed list of all the ingredients for today's samgyetang recipes. Just sit back and relax and enjoy the show. <laughs> Now the only thing you really need to do is just rinse out the uh, bird and empty out the cavity. We want the cavity to be empty. Take a piece of paper towel and just stuff it in here. And I want you to sort of pat it down so that any excess blood that's left in there, we want to take out. So this bird's been cleaned really well. So there's not much blood stuff in there. Now there's this little bit flap of excess fat. You could leave it on or take it off. I'm gonna leave it on because I like the taste of a little bit of that chicken fat in my broth. But if you don't, then just take this off. And we just wanna trim this part right here, the tip. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's just, you know, for aesthetics. Like so. Okay, so let's open this one. So there are many varieties of these samgyetang kits, but this one is the most simple one. It comes with your sweet white rice and it's called chapsal in Korean. And it's basically your glutinous white rice. It's just a little bit more whiter than your regular white rice. Chapsal is the rice that you use to make Korean rice cakes. Duck. 
This container also comes with techu. These are dried jujubus. It's a delicacy in that they also turn this into tea and you could eat it as is. So that we're gonna use two of these and this dried ginseng. Of course, if you have access to fresh ginseng, that's great, but dried ginseng will work just as fine. And some dried chestnuts. Okay. Now, this package is a little bit different in that it doesn't come with the rice. So the rice you have to get separately, but it comes in this pouch. It also comes with techu. You're not supposed to open it, but I'm gonna open it for you so I can show you what's in there. Like, it looks like your kid went out to the backyard and collected tiny pieces of twigs and tree bark, but it's not your ordinary tree bark. So don't use what you find in your backyard. I can't tell you in detail intelligently about all the medicinal qualities of these twigs and barks, but you can read more about it when you get this and it lists all the twigs and such that's in here. So homeopathic herbal medicine is called poyak. I remember as a kid, my grandmother used to make poyak from home, like in this pot. The whole house would literally smell like this, like herbal medicine. So this is optional. You could put this in with your broth and no, your broth is not gonna taste like medicine. It'll have a little bit of a hint of that and whatever essence of herbal goodness that's in this pouch will be in your broth. So if you want to, you could add that, but today I'm not gonna use this. Today, I'm gonna make it simple and just use rice. Techu, our dried ginseng, and our chestnuts. Okay. What I like to do is mix half of sweet brown rice, hyunmi chapsal, and half of hin chapsal. It's just my way of sort of trying to make it a little bit extra healthier. So add some cold water to your rice and just take your hand and just swirl it around. Do not crunch the rice, just be gentle. Like, you know, six, eight times, like so and then pour out the excess water and add some more water and repeat the process about four or five times just to clarify the rice and get rid of all the starch. And here's the rice that we washed and we're just gonna drop it in the cavity like so. Just put a little bit at a time and just stuff it down. And yes, some of it will fall out on the other side, but that is all okay because the rice is gonna cook with the broth and make the broth a little thick. Notice that I am not stuffing the chicken with the ginseng or anything else in it because you don't want the rice to be too strong in taste from the ginseng because ginseng is very strong and we want our rice to just taste like rice. So that's why I'm just only adding the rice. You'll notice that now it's kind of overstuffed and the rice is falling out and that is okay because we do want some of the rice to fall out into our broth as we're cooking it and we're almost there. And I have this kamasot, it's a Korean cauldron pot. You know, of course you could use any pot of your choice. So but... carefully pick up your bird with the breast part facing up and just pat it down one more time again and any excess rice just drop it back in here and we're gonna drop our techu, dried ginseng and dried chestnuts in here and the final ingredient we need two garlic cloves okay. and that's it I mean it is simple as that I grew up going to the market with my grandma to buy fresh chicken like they would literally have cages of chicken. They pick out the live chicken, the butcher would stab it a couple times, you know, mercy kill, and then put it through this machine and spin it and pull out all the feathers. And then she would poach it in super hot water, pull it back out, and then scrape off the excess feathers that did not get pulled out from this machine. And so when you would bring it home, you would still find few pieces of feather on the skin of your bird. So my grandma used to take these really coarse salt, salt that's used for brining to make kimchi and stuff, and she would scrub the outside with it really rough to sort of remove all the excess you know, fine hair that's still on the skin. The chicken skin back then was very lumpy. It wasn't smooth, so she would also like to smooth it out by using that salt scrubbing method. So, you know, I know there's some other recipes out there where it calls for you to scrub down with coarse salt, and you could do that, of course. But with this modern age of poultry farming technology, luckily we receive our chickens with no feathers on it whatsoever, and the skin is super tender, so the poultry farmers are taking care of that for us, luckily, so we don't have to do that. <laughs> oh my God, I would hate to bring home hairy chicken. Oh, that just like, oh. I just wanted to give you a little bit of context on that methodology that was commonly used when I was 
back in the day, a long time ago, when I was really, really young, grade school, that's like long, long time ago. And then I hear you. Some of you are saying, well, you know, what size pot should I use for the size of the bird I'm using? So my general rule of thumb is use a pot that's at least two to three times bigger than the size of your bird. You don't want to go smaller than that. You don't want to go bigger than that because we want our chicken to sort of cook and make its natural broth and juices and still have enough room for the liquid to turn into a delicious broth. But if you kind of crowd it and put in a tight one, then you're not going to get much broth. Pour your water to the side. You want to keep on pouring your water so that it barely covers the top of your chicken exactly like that you want it so that it doesn't cover fully but almost to the top we're gonna keep the heat at super high and we're gonna wait for our pot to come to boil uncovered and we'll be back look at that it is boiling nicely Ooh. so turn down the heat to super low as low as it can go Put your lid on it and let it hang out for an hour. That's it. Super easy. So while our tamgyetang is cooking really nicely, I want to make a quick announcement that next video will be on making bulgogi. That is your iconic Korean barbecue dish of sliced beef marinade. It is one of those gateway dishes to those who have never tried Korean cuisine. So I would love to make bulgogi with you. And if you have not subscribed, make sure to click on that subscribe button that you see at the corner right there. Click on that so that you could become one of the modern peppers. Yeah. Now we still have some time to wait for our samgyetang to finish cooking slowly and that's the key really really slow at really really low heat with the lid on do not open the lid as much as you may want to just let it hang out let it do its job so there's another ingredient that you need to make your samgyetang which is bunchu in the states these are known as chinese chives uh, but also Koreans use it too. So I guess it could be Korean chives too. But anyway, it's not your ordinary chives that you find at the supermarket that are super thin. These guys are kind of thick as you can see, like that. So I have about 10 sprigs of these. So these guys blanched in the samgyetang broth and you wrap the chicken meat with this and eat it. Oh. I can't wait to taste this with you. I'm gonna show you how it's done, how it's properly eaten so Mm, I'm drooling in my mouth already. Mm, yeah. Cut the root end off and leave it in this beautiful length as is. Now, samgyetang is made so that the broth is very, very mild, almost sort of very bland, and you want to salt it at the table. So you want to season to taste with just salt and pepper. About two thirds kosher salt and one third freshly ground black pepper. So now for our bonus recipe, which is taking the leftover broth and the chicken meat and adding some noodles to it and just slurping it, it's so good. But you need to make a little bit of a dipping sauce for that. So to make that, you need to make tadegi. Tadegi. And tadegi is a recipe that I did a couple weeks ago, and I will drop that link in the description box below. But basically, it's your spicy condiment. This is uber easy to make. I always make a bunch, I put it in an airtight container, and it's in my refrigerator. And you know what? When you go to Korean restaurants, they don't put this out on the table. So you could be uber cool in front of your friends and family and ask the wait staff very nicely, may I please have some tadegi? And they will bring it out for you from the kitchen. You could say, yeah, that's tadegi. Did you know what? that was <laughs> so I want you to slice them as thin as you can go then we're gonna add it to our bowl just a handful not too much and this is about a tablespoon of our tadegi and we're just gonna keep this to the side until we're ready to have our course number two with noodles drenched in our broth Ooh la la I think it's ready here we go <gasps> Look at that. Oh my goodness. You see the color? That's the color from the rice and also from the chicken. It's just pure broth, nothing else really in there. Oh, yum. 
And what we're gonna do is take our chives and we're just gonna kind of dunk it in here like this and then lay it on top of our bird. And we're gonna take our big spoon and just coat our chives with our hot broth like that. Just make sure it's completely covered and it's resting on top of our chicken. And then we're gonna close our lid and come back in three minutes. Look at that. Our sanggyetang is now ready. It's easy as that. It's a one-pot meal. It's all done. If you go to a samgyetang specialty restaurant, yes, they will bring it out in this beautiful pot like this, or they will present it to you in a tukbegi like this. So you could transfer this to a beautiful tukbegi and present it that way. But even so, are you supposed to eat it like as a whole bird with a spoon going in there with the chopsticks? No, 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 no. That is not the way to eat sanggyetang. There's a way to enjoy it without looking like you're in the Flintstones or anything like that, okay? First, we're going to take our chives like that. Oh, that looks really yum. And just leave it here in the center, like so. Then we're gonna take two kitchen tools, whatever you got, and go underneath and pick up our bird. Put it down here like that. You see the rice? It's all in there and it looks great. I say if you crisscross the legs and make incisions and stuff it in there, like 10 minutes into cooking your chicken, the meat will fall apart and your crisscross whatever action you did will just come apart. So it's kind of pointless. But if you must cross and tie your legs, I mean, everyone likes to do it the way they like to do it, then use a butcher's twine. Otherwise, I leave it open like this so all the broth goes in and seeps into the cavity of the bird and it's completely drenched in our broth and it cooks the rice really soft and moist. So that's what we wanna do, okay? Okay, so this is your individual serving bowl. You wanna use a mesh strainer to pick up the excess rice that's at the bottom of the pot. Now with the dried ginseng, this it's not edible. So I just put it on the side on my platter just to garnish. And the chestnuts, this is something you fight for. This is what you give to your favorite person or to yourself, of course. And this, of course, you could eat it too. This is really yum. Now we're gonna put this to the side for now. And what you wanna do is take out the rice from the cavity and just put it to the side like that. Look at that. Ooh. So I know there's other recipes out there where they tell you to pre-soak your rice grains for a couple hours and such. My personal opinion is to not do that because first of all, rice cooks in literally eight to 10 minutes and we want to cook our chapsal so that the grains are still intact. So I'm gonna show you, do these grains look like they're intact or over bloated? If you pre-soak your rice grains for a couple hours, I guarantee you your sanggyetang rice will come out overcooked, bloated, and you will definitely see rice grains that lost the shape. So we want our chapsal to come out intact and just cook the way it should be like so wow this looks so good open your mouth open your mouth open your mouth ah. okay i have my kitchen gloves on and you want to just remove look at that look how pretty that looks this you give to yourself don't give it to anyone but yourself and ooh, look at the meat look at that and the color of the skin oh this looks really good. Now put this to the side for now. Oh, look at that. I found a wishbone. All right, I'm gonna save this as a garnish and put it right here. Then just continue taking the meat off the bone. So this is all the chicken bone and excess skin that we're gonna discard. We're gonna now shred all the meat. So when you go to Samgyetang specialty restaurants, the wait staff will do this for you. So you just sit there and watch them do all this. It's really nice. It's a treat to have this and just Clean the platter around once like so. And look at that. Look how pretty that looks. So this is what you put on the table. So finally we get to taste. Yay! I am starving, starving. I've been saving my appetite for this. Okay, so first let's start with just the broth. This is not seasoned. This is straight from the pot. We didn't add any salt or anything to it. 
Mm. Oh. So there's a saying in Korean, 고소한 맛 has so many layers of interpretation, but it just tastes very, has that sort of really satisfying, mm, nutty, kind of beany taste. And it could also mean like another way of saying when something bad happens to someone, you just say, oh, karma is Oops. So the broth tastes really clean. I mean, so mild. You could taste a little bit of that starch taste from the rice and then the natural taste of the chicken and it doesn't taste oily you know we left parts of that fatty part of the uh, chicken in here but that natural oil from the skin fat is just making this broth taste really yummy but not oily or heavy tasting part of eating samgyetang is seasoning it to your taste so you could add as little salt as you want or as much salt as you want so let's mix this up And now let's taste the broth again with our salt and pepper seasoning added. Mmm. Instantly so much better. I mean, I liked it really mild too. It kind of tastes like, I don't know, like just very clean and taste that has not been altered with any ingredients. But now with the salt and black pepper, everything in here tastes 10 times better. And now, I want to taste the rice with you. Okay, let's have the taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rice is so, it's soft, but then it still has this like texture to it because we added both brown and white rice. So it's a nice combination. Oh, this is so yummy. Mm. But now it's time for us to taste the chicken. You just want to dip it a little bit into our salt and pepper and then have a bite. Mmm. Mmm. The chicken meat tastes so clean. Oh, another bite, another bite. Mmm. So what I like to do is just like wrap it around like this. Yeah. And then you dip it in your salt and pepper. This is how it's served at this Tang restaurant that I went with my family in New York. Oh, they knew what they were doing. And I still remember to this day how much I enjoyed that meal. And this was like 15 years ago or longer. So you could make this at home. This is restaurant style that I learned. Mmm. Mmm. The chives are kind of chewy and it has this like meaty texture even though they're chives. Together with the chicken meat and the salt and pepper, you have to give this a try. Now, this is a perfect bite with chicken, chives, and rice, and broth all together. Mm. Oh. And you know, and I just got a little piece of the chestnut that was in here. Mm. So we hook together. The chestnut, it has this like a, a little sweet aftertaste, like sweet potato a little bit. It's such a good combination. Here's my other piece of chestnut, which I'm gonna have. You save it for yourself. Don't share it with anyone. I mean, when it comes to good meals, I don't know about you, but as a mom, I'm always finding myself giving all the nice parts to everyone else except me. But sometimes you have to stop, like feed yourself first, take care of yourself first. And then the baby drumette right here. Mm. Mm, that's good. Add a little salt, pepper. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's good. So here's a perfect bite with everything, including our kimchi, together. Ooh, ooh la la. Mm. Mm. I'm just telling you, kimchi just makes everything taste instantly so much better when you have Korean food. Oh. Mmm, so yum. Okay, I'm gonna stop myself because we have the rest of this and we're gonna turn this into course number two, our bonus recipe.
Hi everyone. So you're wondering, what is this? This is a case for my Korean portable grill. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that every Korean household has one of these portable grills that come with these butane canisters. And this case is so compact. This guy goes in here and you can store it away or travel with it. Any big Korean supermarket will have a huge selection of these portable grills. If you don't live near a Korean supermarket, that is okay because I will have the online links for this in my recipe blog and I will drop that link in the description box below. You need a wide shallow pot and this is so fun to do because after you eat your sanggitang at your table with your family and friends you could have course number two and it's so fun. Now the noodles that we'll be using for course number two is son kalguksu. Son means hand, kal means knife, guksu means noodle. Again if you don't live near a Korean supermarket not to worry just use any fresh pasta. One of the important things to do is when you get these noodles they're going to come all nicely intertwined in the package so what you want to do is you want to let the noodles untangle and breathe just toss it like this literally for like 10 seconds and then you put it on your plate and you let it rest for five minutes max after that it gets dried and that's not what we want pour the rest of your liquid in here Keep the gas grill at super high temperature and I'm adding two cups of Korean chicken broth that I made earlier. And you can learn how to make this super easy Korean chicken broth by watching my cheese burdak video and I'll drop that link in the description box below. Now cover with the lid and wait until the broth is bubbling hot. Alright our broth is bubbling really nice. And to this we're going to add some seasoning, our salt and pepper mixture. Ooh, look at that bubbling. Okay, let's have a taste. Oh, it's nice, nice and salty. But you could add more or less depending on your preference. Now here is the thinly sliced onion and tadegi that we put together earlier. And to this, we're gonna add our boiling broth, just about halfway full, just this much. And this is what each person gets as their dipping sauce. Cover this with a plate and put it aside so the onions kind of has a time to get steamed in the broth. And we're going to add our noodles in here. Make sure to stir it around a little bit. And let that boil on a super high heat. So make sure you kind of stir it around. So it's been about three minutes. Let's have a quick taste to see if the noodles are ready. Mmm. It's ready. I have some cabbage that I cut up into thin strips. We're just going to drop them in here. Mix it up. And to this, right before we start serving everyone, we're going to add the leftover chicken meat in here. You want to turn down the heat at this point to very low or turn it off altogether because the broth is getting really thick. Ooh, look how good that looks. Ooh, can you see? Look at that. Does that look good or what? Oh, yum. Okay, now it's finally time to taste. Now I'm gonna have it with the chicken and the cabbage together. Mm. This tastes completely different from tamgetang in that the broth and the cabbage and the noodles change the thickness of the broth and it just added a different layers of taste to it. So yum. All right, we gotta try the noodles, right? Ooh, I'm drooling in my mouth before I even have it. Mm. Oh, it's That is really yummy. Oh. And you gotta eat this quick because doodles get really thick sitting in this hot pot. One more bite. Mm. And when you eat noodles in Korean culture, it is absolutely okay to slurp. Just don't slurp so much that you're splattering the broth everywhere, that's all. Okay, now with the dipping sauce that we made earlier, the spicy condiment, tadegi. Let's have a taste. 
Ooh, I love spicy food. Mm. And if you don't want to have it spicy, just use the soy sauce dipping sauce that I made last week with the tofu recipe. Or you could add both. If you like it a little bit saltier, add both. All right, I'm going to have it with some puchu, Korean chives. Mm. Oh, that's yum. And then the onions we added earlier, it's all like melted and steamed in the hot broth. So it adds this nice kind of sweet onion taste to the broth. I'm starting to sweat a little. So you could adjust how little or how much more of the spicy tadegi that you want to add here. So you could also drink it straight out of your little dipping bowl too. Oh, that's yum. I don't think I could stop eating. Okay, one more bite, one more bite. Mm. Wow, that's really yum. Okay, like with all of my recipes, I want to stop filming so I could finish my food. I'm sweating and I want to eat more. Okay, so. thank you so much for tuning in today and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you enjoyed watching this video, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up. So please click on that thumbs up icon. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe to my channel. I would love to cook with you again. And so click on that pink button that you see at the corner right there, click on that. Make sure to check out the description box below because I will drop all the links pertaining to today's video recipe and and also for the recipe blog so that you could check it out later. I hope you try this. This is a fun way to enjoy samgyetang as your first course and second bonus course. This is just so good and actually have a samgyetang party. Again, so. thank you so much for watching and I just want to quickly remind you next recipe is Korean bulgogi. That is your thinly sliced beef in this really really yummy soy sauce marinade. So let's make that together and I hope to see you very soon and until then happy happy samgyetang time with your family and friends. Bye now!